Hello everyone. So today I'm going to talk to you a bit about carbonate hardness because I'm going to be testing the carbonate hardness of my new skate. Uh, carbonate hardness is KH is another way of saying it or alkalinity and it's a measure of carbonate ions in your water. And now the reason this is important is because I'm going to be keeping a fish that likes very low pH water in this tank and carbonate carbonates act as a buffer stopping the pH from dropping. So first of all I'm going to test the water uh, and that is going to be done by this Salifert carbonate hardness or alkalinity test. Uh, this is not a sponsored video, this is my go-to hardness test and I'm going to talk you through how a test works and what the results mean. I'll then explain a bit more about what carbonate hardness is and why it's important. So let's get started and test this water. So here is my test kit. I'm going to pour out the contents for you so you can see what's inside. It comes with a nice instruction leaflet, which I always keep on hand just in case I don't remember what I'm doing. So we've got, first of all, a test tube or a vial, which will be used for holding our sample. We have a five mil pipette. So first of all, I'm going to draw four mil into my syringe and pop that into my vial. You can also use two mil for a low uh, sensitivity test, but for this, I'm gonna be using the full four mil to make sure I get a very accurate result. We then have the KH indicator bottle. Now what this is, is effectively, um, well, it's an indicator basically. It's gonna change color when there is an acid present. So in here, I've got a set amount of carbonates which should be buffering the water. So I'm gonna add one, two, three, and four drops into that solution. That's gonna turn a nice blue color. Give it a quick swirl to make sure it's all evenly distributed. And then I have this KH bottle here and a one mil syringe with a pink tip on. It comes with the pink tip not attached to this syringe, but just add it on. And what we do is we just draw up up to the one mil line. Don't worry about an air pocket, you'll see there is an air pocket in this syringe just here. Uh, that is normal, it's because of the tip. Uh, as long as your plunger is lined up with the one mil, you will get an accurate result because what you're doing is recording the amount of water or liquid that you are sort of dispensing into your test. And now, what we're basically doing is we're dropping an acid into an alkali or a base and slowly the carbonate harden the carbonates are going to get used up by the hydrogen ions and when when hydrogen ions are excess they will change this to an acidic uh, solution and the color will change to a pink so we'll add one drop first well that's two drops and we're already seeing it going a purple dark purple uh, that means it's probably about done but just to make sure what you would normally see is a really bright pink and like that now we have a bright pink solution that is our test done so this is a very soft water most of your aquariums will use a lot more solution than that to get our result we look at our reading and it is at 0.95 to 0.96 somewhere between the two now that is important because within our test booklet which is why i always keep it on hand we have a chart or table with the value on the left on the syringe and what that equates to in degrees carbonate hardness so i'm down here at 0.96 to 0.95 so it's somewhere between 0.3 and 0.6 dkh that is very soft uh, most people's water will be above sort of 3 dkh if not towards almost 10. So I've got a very nice soft water which will be nice and malleable in terms of pH. The excess I'm just going to put back into the bottle to use on another day. We then just need to dispose of the test liquid and tidy up and that is the test complete. So I briefly touched on it there why carbonates are important and it's because they act as a buffer for hydrogen ions allowing you to have a very stable pH when you have a lot of carbonates present, 
and allows you to manipulate your pH when you don't have much carbonates. And now if your tap water is testing at a very high or at least higher than you would like carbonate levels, then the only real way to get that down is to use what's called reverse osmosis water or reverse osmosis deionized water if you want it really pure. And effectively what that is, is when the water is forced through a membrane, uh, which is sort of big enough to allow the water particles, the H2O particles to go through the membrane, but the larger salt particles can't pass through that membrane and get stuck behind it giving you pure water on one side, which you can then use in your aquariums. That's your only real way of reducing your carbonate hardness effectively. And that's what I would recommend if you want to keep the soft water fish that I like to keep, but you live in an area with hard water. I use tap water in pretty much all of my aquariums. Uh, that's because it comes out, like you saw, at about 0.3 to 0.6 dKH, which is really, really soft and means I can manipulate my pHs really well. So why else is carbonate important? Well, they're really important in the nitrogen cycle. So you'll have all heard, I'm sure, about the nitrogen cycle. If you come across my channel, you're probably aware of a lot of the basics in fish keeping. And now the first part of the nitrogen cycle is ammonia to nitrite being converted uh, by bacteria. And in that process, these bacteria use up carbonates for their reaction. And over time, you will see a depletion of your uh, carbonate ions in the water if you were regularly testing without doing water changes. Every time you do a water change, you add those carbonate ions back in as long as you have them in your tap water or source water. So most people will not realise this happens, but if you forget to do water changes for a long, long time and you have a lot of stocking density and a lot of ammonia being produced in your tank, the bacteria may use up all of your carbonate ions, which will cause the pH to become unstable and drop lower as the hydrogen ions build up. Uh, this is what's called old tank syndrome and can cause serious problems if you suddenly do a big water change after not doing it for a long time. Now I won't go into detail about that because I'm sure it's already been covered in many places, but effectively that is another reason that even when you're not trying to sort of replicate very acidic conditions, carbonates are really important. And for these two reasons, it's one of my go-to tests when I'm looking after a mature aquarium. If I know the carbonates are at a level where I expect them to be, then I can pretty much guarantee that the pH is also going to be around where I expect it to be. And also in a non-botanical, non-blackwater environment, if the carbonates there and I've got a mature filter, then I know the bacteria are going to be functioning, reducing that ammonia and keeping the fish nice and healthy. If there were a uh, weird result coming up where the carbonates are a lot lower than I'd expect, uh, especially in a normal sort of community tank, then I would be looking at slowly introducing carbonates to the water and ensuring that I am detoxifying the ammonia in some other way or completely removing it before I did that water change. Uh, this is quite tricky, but it's definitely something to be uh, aware of. So this was a very brief little conversation. Well, not a conversation. I was talking to a, a camera, but you know, this was very brief because I am not a chemist. I haven't learned about it in a long time and I have a very basic knowledge enough to get me by. But because I talk about these sort of black water fish tanks, uh, the botanical method aquariums, I want to make sure that I also cover these really important aspects to recreating those sorts of environments in a glass box. Because if you do not understand carbonate hardness and you're trying to breed, let's say, licorice gouramis, uh, when your tap water, with your tap water, which has a very high carbonate level, you're never going to get the pH down, you're never going to have soft water, which is what's required to keep these fish. So, I really recommend you all go out, get yourself a test kit. You can get yourself a dedicated one like I have, the Salafert one. Uh, the NT Labs Aquarium Lab test kit comes with KH as well as all of your ammonia, nitrite, nitrate and pH tests. Uh, it also comes with GH, which is your general hardness, 
and that is the measure of the calcium and magnesium ions in the water. And now, just quickly before I go, for those of you that don't keep the botanical method of aquariums but are still watching my videos and enjoying this and want to learn more about carbonates, and you probably might want to know about how to raise your carbonate hardness uh, to stop tanks from crashing. And the best way to do that is to add carbonate ions in, in the form of salts. And now, if you wanted to uh, raise your calcium levels as well as your carbonates, a lot of people recommend you use crushed coral uh, sand, something like that, ocean rock, which is basically calcium carbonate. Uh, calcium carbonate will slowly dissolve over time, releasing both calcium, which will raise your GH, and release carbonates, which will raise your KH. If you only want to sort of raise one, you will want to use a salt that only contains one of those ions. So if you want to raise your KH, you could use sodium bicarbonate or potassium um, bicarbonate or carbonate, I can't remember, I think it's bicarbonate. Uh, those ones will not raise your GH because it doesn't have any calcium or magnesium ions, but it will raise your carbonates or your KH quite nicely. And vice versa, you can use a salt that is calcium or magnesium based but not carbonates, and they will raise your GH without impacting your KH. This can be quite important for keeping shrimps where you need to get successful molts, so you do need calcium and you do need some carbonates in the water, but you also need a low pH and a soft water. So yeah, that's all from me today. I'm just sat down here on my stool. Uh, I'm gonna do some tank maintenance now, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to learn a bit more, um, pop a comment and I will get back to you with some extra information if I know the answer. If not, I'll definitely be able to direct you to somewhere that will be able to tell you the answer. So yeah, thanks for watching uh, and I'll speak to you all soon.